20 years ago, a documentary came out following a man named Mark Bittner. Now, at the time, he was homeless. He was a musician on the streets of San Francisco, and he had a unique relationship with a flock of wild parrots. And a film was made. Everything changed for everybody involved. How long have you owned these? I don't own any of them, actually. They're all wild. When he first called, what I was taken by was the fact that here's a guy that is beginning to understand the relationships between the individual birds, which is a very rare opportunity in science. When Mingus is a bad bird, rather than putting him in the cage, I throw him outside. He wants back in so badly. Hey, Mingus, want to dance? Well, I got me a roof, and I got me some clothes, and I eat real good, man, I overdose. Oh my gosh, I love this. This is part of the restored and remastered film, The Wild Parrots of Telegraph Hill. It's back on the big screen, and look who's here. It's Mark Bittner himself, who you just saw in that clip, and the filmmaker, Judy Irving. I loved hearing you sing, Mark. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to ABC 7 at 7. Hi, Judy. Hi. 20 years ago, when you look at that clip, what do you both think of that, Judy? <laughs> I just love Mingus because he was really getting into it. He was. <laughs> Mark, he loved your music. He, well, you know, he had, he'd been a pet and then somebody released him into the flock of, mm. of wild parrots. He was originally wild actually too, caught down in South America. But he was, he already knew how to dance. Somebody had him <laughs> and whoever had him had taught him to dance and I didn't notice it for a while. And there he was one day just bopping along. <laughs> <laughs> Mark. When you think about 20 years ago, where you were in your life as this film was being made and where you are now, I mean, what a journey. Yeah, it was, I didn't get into it as a transforming experience, yeah. but it definitely was. It was, it was a really lonely period for me. I decided that I just had to make a break with my old life and find a new direction. And for a good while, they were my only friends. Mm. And I got to know them all individually, and they really were friends. You were living uh, in, so <clears throat> you're living in San Francisco, homeless, but also for a time you were, you were living in uh, another person's home, right? Like well, in a small I, I space. Well, there used to be something called a street person. Mm -hmm. It's different than what we think of now as homeless, and I was more a street person. I would find little places to crash, but sometimes it was just like a storeroom. And, you know, I was trying to find my way. I had had a bad accident, mentally, so to speak, but it wasn't really damaged. But I didn't have a course. And I was just looking, looking, looking. Eventually, I got this caretaking thing on Telegraph Hill, and that's when I met the parrots. And when I got that thing, it got me off the street. Mm. And it's like that's when I decided I need to be alone and figure out where I go, because I can't keep doing what I've been doing. Judy, how did you encounter Mark? Uh, I love birds. I've been making some films about birds and some friends told me, you got to make a film about this guy who feeds the parrots. <laughs> so that's how it worked. It was just word of mouth. He had done a slideshow at the library, which was very popular. And I went over there and I saw him feeding the birds. I saw his relationships with the birds and how much he knew about them, individual birds. And I thought, yeah, this could be a good movie. <laughs> and four and a half years later, I finished it. <laughs> and it became iconic. I mean, we use iconic a lot now. <laughs> the, the youngs love to throw iconic around like a shoe is iconic. Yeah. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this is truly iconic because after this film came out and it started to not just, you know, become popular in the city, but then throughout the state and then throughout the country and people started seeing it around the world. And then there was this connection between San Francisco and these parrots. I mean, it was a really an entryway for people to know this city. Mm -hmm. How did that make you feel as a filmmaker? Great. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I had been sort of toiling in the trenches of environmental documentary filmmaking, generally shorter films for television. And this one just really hit it big. And, uh, but I'd been making films for many, many years before this happened. So it was a, it was a thrill. It, it, it eventually got up to, out to 500 theaters in the United wow. States. And it, 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 it surprised everybody, including me. <laughs> Mark, was there any regret at all on your part when the movie originally came out? No. No, you were, you were in it. I mean, to me, it was, 
I've always been interested in art projects, mm -hmm. writing books, recording albums, etc. So to me, it was an art project that I was involved with that was very successful. So I was, I was happy about that. And I'm sure about the impact. I'm sure you heard from people pretty soon after oh, yeah. it came out. Yeah, I. The response has been overwhelming. Sometimes just really emotional, um, heartfelt emails, letters, all kinds of things, and that's gratifying because you want to reach somebody when you do something like that, and we really did. There's a whole generation of people who are just rediscovering the film. Right. Especially now that it is back out at the Roxy Theater and it's going to go other places after this. Mm -hmm. So that must be an interesting experience for both of you because you know the story so well and a lot of San Franciscans do of a certain yeah. era. Right. But the people who have just moved here in the last year, they don't even, or the last few years, they don't even know about the Paris. Right. There's a whole new generation of people who are discovering the film for the first time which is fantastic. I love so, that. There have been a lot of kids at the screenings, too. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Yeah. So I know people are probably wondering, where are they now? So let's talk about where you all are now and what has become of the parents. <clears throat> well, the flock is doing fine. I mean, when I left, I think there were around 60, and uh, it's somewhere between two and 300 now. They're very comfortable uh, here. They know the city really well. I've been working on a book about my life on the street. It's really finished. I'm just looking for a publisher now. It's called Street Song. And I have an album to go along with it, Street Songs. So I've been just working at that. And, and, and still in San Francisco? Yeah, yep. on Telegraph Hill. Yep. The film especially gave me a platform to work from because I can be taken seriously with, you know, when you have something like that. I also wrote a book. The Wild Parrots of Telegraph mm -hmm. Hill, which did well. So I sh I'm hopeful that I'm going to get this new book out. And Judy, you're making films. Yeah, I've made a couple of feature documentaries since Parrots, called, one called Pelican Dreams, kind of a Valentine to Pelicans, and then Cold Refuge about the benefits of full immersion in cold, salty water of San Francisco Bay. Yes. And how it... Which still scares me, but <laughs> I understand people love it. It's become sort of a hot thing. I, I, yeah. When I started filming and it was really under the radar, I've been swimming in the bay half my life. So that one is out too in theaters. Cold Refuge. Yeah. And now can we introduce our friend who has been patiently waiting to make his yeah. <laughs> yes. ABC7 debut. Yes. Patiently. This is Parker the Bird. This is Parker. This is little Parker. Oh, Parker, hello, friend. Parker, you wanna come out? You wanna come out, little birdie? Mark, tell me a little bit about Parker. Oops, okay, oops, well. Oops, oops. Hang on. It's yeah. okay, Parker. It's all right, Parker. Oh. This is a difficult experience yeah, for him, it's, but. It's stressful. He's, he's smart enough and cool enough. Um, there's been a problem. In the film, I talk about these birds that have a virus, and it was a constant issue and it turns out uh, they've learned recently that it's not a virus it's rat poisoning and it damages their nervous system it's okay little bird and he's one of those birds he mm. got into the rat poison and he's got a lot of neurological damage he can't fly and <coughs> he walks clumsily but he's a smart bird he doesn't he didn't lose any of his marbles <laughs> right. he knows what's going on all the time but this is a really strange experience for him he, oh yeah yeah he's smart enough to this is a strange experience for me, and I do it every day, Mark. So uh -huh. I, I totally get it. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you okay? obviously have a lot of love for this little bird. Well, yeah. He's, he, I've had him 20 years. Wow. He was a member of the wild flock. And That's a very long time for a parrot to live, isn't it? Well, some birds can live up to 75. Wow. This okay. species in captivity, like 35 years. OK. But out in the wild, 5 to 12 is old. I see. OK. That makes sense. Well, Parker, I know you're in good Can hands. Can you um, show the show Parker off? There, there he go. is. There's little birdie. There's the little birdie. But he was born in the wild. He was born in the trees wow. here in San Francisco. And he was about a year when he came yeah, down with his bird. illness. Well, we don't officially have a mascot for ABC 7 at 7, but I would like to oh, nominate hey. Parker yeah. <laughs> as the official mascot of the ABC 7 at 7 that show. Because be we especially, really love him. Especially since the wild parrots are now the official animal of San Francisco. Of San Francisco. And they're right here in the Embarcadero. Yeah. I see yeah. them all the, all time. the time. Oh, yeah. yeah. They, yeah. they roost near here. 
Well, Parker, the next time I see your friends up there, I'm going to give them a shout out and let them know that you say hi. <laughs> let us know where the film is playing. It's playing at the Roxy right now for four more days this week. Uh, the last day being next Tuesday, tonight, tomorrow, Saturday and Tuesday. And then it'll go around uh, to other theaters in the Bay Area. It's also out there in nationally. It's already played in Cleveland and Pittsburgh, and, and so it's, it's making the rounds. It's going to play in it. Bolinas on February 3rd. Nice. It's so nice to be reunited with the wild parrots of Telegraph Hill again, and of course with Judy and Mark and Parker. Thanks so much for being here. This was a real pleasure. <laughs> Thank you.